Right, hello everyone, how's it going? Hope everyone's having a nice evening. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so this is the second episode in the introduction to pen testing. Um, primarily we're going to go over the, the, the sort of next three um, OWASP categories. So just for a recap from the last stream, uh, we did an introduction to OWASP. We, we sort of discussed what it was about and, and what sort of what, why it exists and what, what the importance of it is. We then went on to discuss things like report writing and why that's important. Um, and the three categories that we discussed in the in the first stream were uh, is good direct object references, SQL injection, and cross-site scripting. Uh, they were the sort of three primary focuses on the, on the first one. Um, we have a we have a second well we have a first guest tonight. We have a second person here. Um, his name is Spiros, and I'll let him introduce himself. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Can you Richard? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, mate. Yeah, let me just uh, bump you up your volume a little bit. There you go. Perfect, man. Thank you. Hey, hello, guys. Uh, so, as Richard mentioned, my name is Spiros. You can find me on uh, Twitter under uh, uh, Rootkey. Um, to be honest, I'm not really active on, on, on social media. Uh, yeah, I'm a father of two and a husband, as you can see also in slides. I'm working for more than 10 years in, in security, IT security. Been involved both in operation and application security as well. Uh, right now, my position is uh, working as a principal security engineer for uh, yeah, for a big organization. I'm also the founder of uh, Lutsec.io, which is yeah my personal attempt to create my own uh, cybersecurity uh, company. And I'm here to collaborate with uh, with uh, Richard or Mandis, as you prefer. And yeah, I firstly reached to to uh, to Richard. And I was like, hey, mate, maybe, you know, I have some good ideas on sharing content and materials. Maybe we can try out collaborating and do some live streaming together and see how it goes. So here we are. Uh, I would like you to consider at least the first streams a little bit informal. And uh, yeah, stay tuned because a lot more content is coming up and uh, it will be fun and uh, more advanced stuff are coming and that's pretty much about me awesome thank you mate so yeah actually before you move before i move on from that yeah so what one of the things we want to do uh, as a sort of collaboration is deep dive into some of these sort of more uh, more unique issues things like e e even if the issue itself isn't unique so, so say sql injection or something, but we want to go into the nitty-gritty of it and we want to get down and sort of find the the obscure things and the, the fun things that that we both i'm sure enjoy doing so yeah continuing from the last stream um we are going to share the content here so I, I, we've got three categories that we're going to do well i suppose four if you had include the labs but the three OWASP categories um insecure design which i'll do uh security misconfigurations which spiros will do and outdated software and components which i'll do as well and then we'll both do a lab each um probably the the port twiggle labs so in good design so you're gonna to have to bear with me because these sorts of slides are more difficult to write than sort of technical uh technical slides but bear with me and i'll, I'll, I'll go through it um so it's good design it, it's it, it's not a technical bug it, it's uh sort of it's an implementation bug, I guess. The, the the um the process of the application is technically sound, but the the design of it is sort of is flawed in it in its ways. Um, so that includes things like business logic issues and deserialization issues. Um, I do have a code sample in a minute to show you, which if you followed me on Twitter, you'll probably see it anyway. Um, it's not strictly a insecure design issue but it, it kind of floats around that area area um business logic issues so again not technically 
not not a technical vulnerability. It's a sort of um, a design flaw. Uh, so technically, the code can be perfect. Like you know, they, it can not include any SQL injections or cross site scripting or you know anything like that. But there's still flaws in it where the the client or, or you know the, the developers didn't think about what happens if a user does something in a different way or something along those lines. Um, and it basically results in performing unintended actions. So maybe you can get a refund instead of paying for something. Uh, if you give it like a negative, if, if you were on the shop or something and you were giving a negative value for an item, you might get a refund for it rather than paying for it. Um, it's that sort of thing. And it's flawed assumptions about the user actions. So like I was saying, it, it, in a shop, for example, you would assume that a user wants to purchase 10 items of a of a bottle of Coke, for example. But that that assumption is that you're going to put in your quantity of uh, of a positive number. But if a user puts in a if a user puts in a negative number, then the system might break in a different way. Um, just uh, uh, going off that, if if you think of a even if you just think the maths of the back end of that, um, if you have ten times ten, so ten or one pound times ten bottles of Coke. That's ten pound, but one pound times minus ten. Sorry, my phone was going off. Uh, one pound times minus ten would be minus ten pound. So yeah, um, and this all mostly stems from excessive trust in the client side controls. So if you, even if you have a, a JavaScript front end that that protects you from putting in negative numbers, you may you may be able to sort of capture that in the in the in the request or modify the page or, or some you know get away get around it somehow and perform sort of illegal actions as it were so yeah here's the assumptions uh people are going to drive on the road or not as you can see there they might they might do so what's what what's the difference between this one and sorry between business logic issues and, and say you know a more technical issue um the the business logic issues are generally unique to an application or a business. Um, very few applications will have the same exact business logic issue as as another one. Um, and they they this isn't something that tools can find. Obviously, tools put input in. Um, they might be able to detect some logic issues, but not all of them. For example, the the dodgy user input sort of characters like the minus minus values and all that they might be able to find it but when it comes to sort of missing missing steps or um doing an intended flow in a different order of an application then that's where it's going to fall over you're not you're not going to be able to find this sort of thing with with tooling not 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 normal tooling anyway um <clears throat> sorry and it requires knowledge of the business and the the intended flow of the application so again, if you know how an application flows properly, you can go back into it and go, actually, what happens if I miss this step out or if I do this step at the end or, or I, you know, I, I miss the first seven steps out, you know, who, who knows? Um, but yeah, you, you need that intended, you need that knowledge to begin with. Um, and yeah, it, it can be defended against with generic defenses for, for the same reason that you can't find it with tooling. You just, you, you need to understand the flow of it to, to then defend against it. So common attack vectors, this was a snippet got from uh, retrieved from the Rapid7 website. Um, these are the 10 most common business logic attack vectors. So it's authentication flags and privilege escalations, critical parameter uh, manipulation, developers cookies tampering, uh, and business process logic bypassing. Um, there's, there's a lot here. <laughs> LDAP parameter identification, business constraint exploitation, business logic bypass, exploiting client side business, Routines embedded in JavaScript uh, client side stuff. Um, identity or profile extraction. So I keep getting these notifications and uh, I, will, I will get back to them. Uh, file or unauthorized URL access um, and denial of service. But yeah, they're the most common, uh, they're the most common ones from, from Rapid7. So just a quick example that I sort of put together. Um, like I was saying, you, you might have an application, and, and in this case, let's assume it's a multi-factor authentication mechanism. So the intended flow is you log in with your username and password, 
you get a verify a verification token uh, you know with your google authenticator or whatever um and then you get an email saying hey are you sure you want to authorize this device and then you log in but what happens if so what happens if you if you miss some of the steps so in the previous example let me show you here you've got login slash token then you've got authorize your device then dashboard but what happens if you just miss the next the two middle steps if you go from login with your username and password and then straight to dashboard is there is there any code stopping you from doing that you know what happens if you don't have to authorize the device if you just it, you might have to put in your 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 authy token so your authentication token um but you might not need to authorize the device you might not need or, or other way around maybe you get an email before you even put in your mfa token who knows it's that sort of thing it's that sort of flow um also things like parameters so you you might have uh like your username when, when you're submitting your um multi-factor authentication step or your or the other steps you've got the um the the, the email version the author authorizing the device if you're if the parameters in there have a username or an identifier for your account you may be able to swap that out for another account so you might be able to go okay well this this verification process is for mantis but actually i want to do it for spiros or vice versa or whatever um so yeah it's it's worth checking that sort of thing um brute forcing tokens is actually one that i've done on a pen test a couple of times so the username and password's correct but then you've got a six digit um authentication code that you need to put in so you can brute force these fairly quickly especially with something like turbo intruder um and especially if the session doesn't expire so worth thinking about okay, yeah the, the application was programmed in a technically secure way um but the the issues lie within the the, the steps of the the, the the steps of the logic you know the, the there might not be any sort of control between the steps um, automated testing is not going to find it and the, the the severity of these issues do really range from a low risk to a critical risk issue um it could be as simple as bypassing i don't know some profile picture thing i don't know on an application to to really affecting the heart and soul of the application itself um and this was a small example that i think spiros put together but let's assume we have a we have a news site here that publishes articles to the web. Um, the sorry, my phone. I'm just gonna put it down like that. Um, the application will guide you through. So, for example, you save a draft, you you send it off for approval, um, you get it back when it's approved, and then you publish it to a site. But what happens when you save a draft, you request for approval, but then you edit it afterwards? Can you publish an article that's not? That does not fit for purpose um i don't know you'd, you'd have to test it but there's that sort of it's that sort of uh, logic there that you'd have to test uh this is the code example that I, I like to put code examples together where i can this strictly should be in ssrf however it is kind of a logic issue so technically everything here is right i'm not gonna go through it too much but technically everything here is right but there is sort of a flow issue that this it's called a time of check time of use sort of issue um, the url is checked with the resolve to make sure it's not an internal address however you're then using the url so at the time of the checking it, it is fine but then you're using it afterwards again it's not strictly a logic issue but it kind of falls under that sort of remit so remediation um like i said earlier there's no sort of blanket term or blanket case that you can use to remediate all all logic issues it's going to have to be sort of an in-depth knowledge of the application and then the logic that goes behind that the intended flows and then working with the developers or, or if you are a developer um to, to figure out exactly at what point that's going to fail and then make sure the logic works in order um yeah avoid making implicit assumptions um so <laughs> Like, like I just said, like you can't, you can't make any assumption that the the application is going to work in a specific way. Because again, what if it doesn't? Um, maintain clear documents. So especially when you're talking about assumptions and things, if you are going to make an assumption, document it. 
make sure that people know that the that the flow of the application is supposed to work in a specific way and then any any flow diagrams um albeit they don't have to be that exactly flow diagram but a, you know a, lo a logical sort of flow through the application document it just just document it it's not hard <laughs> um yeah and, and perform some threat modeling um what happens if xyz happens is this going to be a critical thing that happens that, that will affect the application if somebody can bypass it um and then yeah create specific security tests for abuse of logic um yeah self-explanatory i think and labs um i put lab time in throughout this but i think we're going to do all the labs at the end is that right spirit are you happy with that I think it will be better if we do actually each lab after the, the presentation. It will make more sense, at least okay. for the people. Oh, sorry, I just clicked on these. That's fine. Give me two seconds and I'll um I'll start up the start up the labs. Sorry guys, I'm just uh, just logging into this port socket now. I realized that last time I put my password in on the email field and then my password was just there for everyone to steal. Fun times. Um, I also just did this on the wrong bloody browser. Port Let's make sure I'm logged in on the right one. Um, I think for this, for the next five minutes, I'm just going to put it on be right back just so I can get everything sorted. Um, make a cup of tea. I don't know. Give me five minutes and I'll make sure it's all back. I need to set up burp and I just need to get the, the lab up. Right, cool. We're on be right back. Because I see 30, 33 people being online. You guys, uh, please let us know if, if you like the format, uh, if you like the material, uh, what kind of material you would like to see in, in the next streams. So we know where we are, what we are to. Right, so we have an excessive trust in client-side controls. Um, I'm gonna have to share my entire screen. So two seconds, let me just put that one on and mute that one. There you go, you should be able to see me. Let me just know if you can. I believe you can. Yep, cool, according to my phone, I can. So we've got a shop, we like to shop. Um, you can all hear me, can't you? I, I did unmute myself. Let me just double check. Yeah, cool. Okay. Right. So, no idea how to how to solve this. Um, let's go have a look around. So, I should probably check out what we actually have to do for this. But let's uh, let's just have a little poke around and see what we can do. Let's add one to cart. Uh, let's also add this to my scope. I'll zoom in a little bit. Unfortunately, I can't zoom in on Burp, which is a pain, at least not until I restart it. That's fine, intercept. What? That was responses. Right. So let's just see what goes on here. Uh, so we've got and again i'm sorry that it's a little bit small but um 
Is it possible on birth as well? No, unfortunately, mate, it's not. Um, th I mean, we can. Uh, yeah, all right, two seconds. We can. It's just I have to restart the burp. Um, I don't remember where it is. Miscellaneous. There is somewhere I'll oh, display. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Change font. So let's do 20, I think. Would 20 be okay? I don't know if you can read that. I mean, if not, I can do 32. I'll do 32. It's quite a small thing. Oh, wow. That's really... Let's have a look. Can you see that? I mean, that's that's pretty big. <laughs> Is that too big? I, th I feel like that might be too big. It does look a bit big, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, uh, let me let me put that down a little bit. Here we go, 24. Trial and error, lads, trial and error. Um, let me go back into a request and see what we've got here. I think that's okay, isn't it? Can you see that? 24, perfect. That's what I like to hear. Thanks. Okay. Um, right, so, <laughs> starting again. So we can add we can add items to the cart. We can, we can intercept that. Um, let's go back to Port Sawyer quickly. So web security. Just so we can see the actual... the. the Main sort of purpose of this this exact lab. Uh, what business logic? So the lab doesn't adequately validate your user input. You can exploit the logic flaw in its purchasing to uh, sorry purchasing workflow to buy items for an unintended price. Solve the lab by a leap jacket, which is this one. Awesome. So. Add to cart. I mean, the price is there. This is this was sort of saying about a minute ago. Um, you can check the parameters, although you can see it in the in the um, page. But I'm going to capture it in burp. So instead of one thousand three hundred thirty-seven thousand one hundred thirty-three. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna buy it for one dollar. And and not intercept everything else. So let's go into here. Total. Ah, oh, that was pence. It was, it was cents. Um, and then place order. Please log in to continue. Ah, uh, what's the username and password? Go back to the home. Uh, go into here. <coughs> so we'll add that to cart and we'll change the price we want to send again. I will get to all of these alerts in a minute, I promise. Um, before I move on to, to Spiros, I will say thank you to everyone. Let's place order for one for one cent. There we go. We solved the lab. So instead of buying a price or a jacket for one thousand three hundred thirty-seven dollars, we bought one for one cent. Um, perfect, really. Uh, let's see if we can do one more because that was quite quick. Let's go back. High-level logic vulnerability. So the lab doesn't adequately valid validate user input. You can exploit. Is this this is the one this isn't the one I just did was it? Well it's very similar. Why though? Why though? Okay. Let's log back in. We will do one more. There we go. Right, let me just add this to the uh to the scope. Oh no, take that one so we don't get that one anymore. Cool. Okay, so I guess we're buying the same jacket, won't we? So let's have a look at this. Uh, let's 
intercept the request and go add to cart. Okay, so in this one, there's no price. So we can't just manipulate the price. We can't just say, hey, we want it for one, one cent. So they've done something better there. Okay, so that, that's all there is in there. So let's go into the, here we go. So what happens if we add another one? Nope. Or if we place order, I'm not logged in. Damn it. Please log in to continue. Uh, it was Pete, was it Peter? Right, my account. Uh, no, not my account. I have store credit. Why would I have store credit? What an interesting thing to have. Okay. All right, anyway, go back to here and we need to try and buy one of these. So add it in. I mean, the first thing I'd, I'd want to do is give a negative quantity. And just to see if that would give us a price of like minus, there we go. So yeah, exactly that. So when we gave it a negative quantity, like I was saying earlier in the in the shop that doesn't validate the user input, um, you can get a, an order for minus the amount of, or the, minus the amount times the quantity sort of thing. So in this case, we get minus $1,337 back. Oh, well, we don't, but that would have been a scenario. Uh, total price cannot be less than zero. Let's place an order. Let's see what it, what's in there. Although, what happens, this might be off topic a little bit, but what happens if we just, I don't know, it's just an error, okay. Oh, card is empty, thank you. So let's go back to here because apparently it's just removed it from my thing. Uh, let's go add to cart again. Quantity is one. Product ID is one. Um, let's see what we've got here. To be honest, I thought it would have been one of those two. I thought you'd either times it by um, a negative value or okay I'm I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm, I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to be doing it net quantity of negative two why I don't understand why I've got a quantity of negative two I might have to leave this one for a minute. Um, I might. I'll go. I'll, I will figure this one out. But I don't want to take up the entire stream of me just struggling to do this one supposedly easy issue. Um, we got a coupon. Did I miss this? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to move on. Um, again, I don't want to hijack the entire stream. I will come back to this after, but I don't think it'd be fair on making everyone wait for me to struggle with this. Let me just uh, pass back to here. As long as everyone's alright with that, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to do it. Either, you know, unless everyone's happy for me to move on, or I can sit here and struggle. It, it, tell me what you want to do. We can try the quantity value over it into just size. Yeah, we could do. Yeah, that's a good point. Um. The way I figure these things um, usually is when, can I just send that to a repeater? When, when it's like a, okay. When it's a, sorry, well, I, was, I was sort of looking at that and, and trying to talk. Um, when it's a sort of an apprentice level issue, I don't normally think they're supposed to be that difficult, so I, I, I'm probably overthinking this. So, one, 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 one. You can see what's in here. My car is empty. Okay. 
but yeah what if you have negative quantity uh negative quantity and price for one item and add the other item the sum over zero at checkout well so you have one as a full price and then one as a negative hold on let me read that again actually you can add lower value product what so i have one as a let's let's add one of these to cart is this what you mean add one of these to cart then add something else as a as a lower product Say one of these, for example. Mm. I, was, I was actually supposed to capture that. Keep your suggestions coming. I'll say I'll move on to. I'll, I'll, I'll let Spiros do his his bit. Um, I don't want to take up the entire evening, but I will come back to this in a minute. Maybe they do some dynamic parameter mapping on the back end. So as in price or something yeah i did think that but it, yeah my my, my I, maybe i'm overthinking this because my, my concern with this was it was probably supposed to be easy uh as, as in i would have thought that everything would have been given to you you're not supposed to be getting things it's always easy if you know the solution of course yeah it was just price wasn't it let's just do price as one Yeah, you you are perfectly right, mate. Yeah. So I think let's remove that entirely. Start that again. Yeah. No. Okay. Now I feel silly. I should have just tried that, and that was actually one of my first thoughts as well. And I was just like, well, it's not going to be that because you know they they did that example in the last time, in the last one. But okay, live and learn, I guess. Uh, did I? What was I? Did I, did I forget to add the price? Because that worked, didn't it, last time? Or was I missing uh, I'm looking postcard. Uh, changed, request, edited. Price equals one. Oh, maybe it wasn't that. Maybe I just saw quantity two here and I assumed the price would go up. So you can add one jacket for 1,337. And add one something else for minus one quantity. Yeah, okay. Let's give that a go. Yeah, I've already got one in there, so add this. Add to cut. Capture. Minus one quantity. Why? No, you're perfectly right, I think, mate. Not enough. Oh, well, now I have to do it under store the, the under the amount of store credit. Right. So one of them. Um, maths. Uh, back to that one. Go on, maths people. Tell me how many of these I need to take off it. So add to cart. This. What's that? Sixty-five. So. Yeah, that's what I mean. It has to be under the store credit number, but what's that? I, I suppose I can just do 10 and then I can actually do it in the UI, I imagine. Can I take more off? I do. Why was I even trying to do it in burp? I can just do it in here. Man, sometimes. Sometimes I overcomplicate things. There you go. Under $100. Well, I appreciate you, Mr... I, I'm not even going to try and pronounce your name. Um, but yeah, nice one. I, I mean, chat definitely did more than I did there. Um, anyway, that was that one solved. I've got more labs to embarrass myself over in a minute as well. So, Spiros, I think, man, it is down to you. Uh, in two seconds it will be. Let me just... There you go. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Can you hear me, right? They should be able to. All right. So the next topic, the one I'm going to discuss is about security misconfiguration. Uh, to be more specific, I will discuss about uh, 
cross origin resource sharing and XXE XML external entity injections, right? So let's uh, right. Okay. One thing even before starting regarding uh, um, cross uh, sorry course is uh, yeah one thing that I would like you to keep in mind is request simple request as as we call it like uh, HTTP GET for uh, retrieving images, retrieving scripts, and CSS files are always allowed by the cross origin, right? What is not allowed is uh, reading actual data, and the reason behind it is SOAP, same origin policy. Uh, when we are uh, actually talking about origins, we need to be careful what an origin is right an origin is consists of a protocol domain plus a port if if you miss something of those most of the people do forget the port that's not really how to secure your uh, your origin uh, can we move to the next one please thank you all right so i think this slide could be a little bit better but yeah, imagine that in your left side, in the left side is, is your browser, and in the right side is how the data is being is being transferred, right? So we have the example.com as, as a website. Uh, and uh, in this case, the uh, it it relaxes the same origin policy by using course. Therefore, the website.example.com is able to show the uh, the actual data, right? So we are uh, sending a get, we are getting the data from API example.com, which use course, and then we are able to present it in a www.example.com, which is two different origins by uh, uh, specification. Now, uh, course, remember course, uh, it's not a security feature, right? It's about being friendly with the same origin policy, opening your standards uh, with the same origin policy, relax your same origin policy, which normally limits uh, your data to your own website, right? No one else is able to, to view your data if, if your uh, same origin policy is strict. And it can be a security issue when it's misconfigured. Uh, we'll see in the next slide a few examples of a misconfiguration. So you see uh, uh, here the, 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 all the three examples here are, yeah, are misconfigurations. Uh, in the first example, of course, we are allowing pretty much everything, right? It's a wildcard. But in the second example, the, the developer who wrote this piece of code, he thought that by including a wildcard before the domain, he's going to actually uh, yeah, having all subdomains of the uh, domain.com, which is not true. Uh, the browsers will treat it as a wildcard and it will ignore everything from the wildcard. So the, sec the first and the second examples, they have the exact same impact, right? If, if you want to have multiple origins, you need to space specify them separately. Um, the last line, access control allow credentials goes through. Uh, that means that in the request, we are also uh, authorized with, uh, uh, with the cross origin. So we are actually passing um, our own authentication there. Uh, when it comes to defenses, uh, again, it's uh, uh, course. It's a simple uh, misconfiguration. To be honest, uh, I'm not really sure if you can find it, especially in a big sites, uh, public at least. But you will definitely see it if if you are working in a larger organizations, uh, you will definitely see it on most internal websites they are using, right? So the way to, to avoid such kind of uh, uh, 
Mission configurations is, of course, do not set overlap permissions on resources and uh, uh, specify the list of allowed uh, cross domains for shared resources. As I mentioned previously, if you want to have all your subdomains, the solution is it's not to wildcard uh, everything, it's just to include all the subdomains separately. And again, it's uh, of course, it's not about security. It's mostly about controlling your data, who and where can be can be appear, right? Here we have an example, uh, a code example. It's it's, it's uh, based on Flask. And pretty much here, what you can see is that uh, the course is being specified on the application uh, level, right? Um, so we are creating our app and you see the after that in the course we are passing the app as an argument plus we're having also the credentials equals true. Another way uh, you can you can do pretty much the same is by specifying it in in the route which I think is if I'm not mistaken it should be on the next slide. Right. This one. Uh, so here you're specified actually on a separate resources. Please keep in mind that the examples that you see here are not uh, correct, right? Are also misconfigured. So to summarize, uh, implementation mistakes can lead to information disclosure and JSON hijacking, right? Do not use wildcards as practice of including all subdomains because yeah, we already mentioned it, the browsers do not support it and everything will be treated as just a wildcard. Um, implement the list of trusted origin for cross site resource requests, right? So having a white list with all the subdomains you want to include there. And I think pretty much uh, that's it regarding the, the presentation at least. We can try out and move to a lab. Let me share my screen and let me know when you can see my screen. I just see the presentation on your screen at the moment. I think. Can you now see my screen? Uh, nope. I can see lab time. Hold on, this is working. Hmm. That's weird because I'm actually sharing my screen. Oh, apparently I was on lab time. Right, okay, yeah, we can see your screen. Um, let's just make sure. Perfect. All right, the problem with this is 11. Cool, I think, that I, I think it should be fine. You should be able to see everything. Um, sorry guys, we had to obviously figure out a way of, of screen sharing and this was sort of a solution that may or may not work. We'll, we'll figure this out as we go. Yeah, bear with us, guys. Uh, it's, yeah, we also need to figure out the best way for uh, collaborating with uh, Richard. Uh, by the way, this account is just a temporary email. To be honest, I've never used Port Squigger Labs and uh, when I've noticed that I have to be registered, I was a little bit surprised. Let me go to the labs. Uh, let me first find them here. Okay. So let's start with the first one. And let me read what is needed to a lab. That should be. No, yeah, that's actually your account, I think, mate. That's what I had to do. I had to log back in and then. Oh. Yeah. 
It, it, yeah, it was a weird sort of bug that they seem to have. Okay, I'm, I see. What? Okay, I still have. I, again, I have to log in. Then let me do it. Sorry, guys. Yeah, so it seems to be a bug on their website because I had the same thing. I logged in and then I still had to log back in anyway. Okay, uh, let's go to the academy. Let's go to all labs. Actually, I think I can close that. Oh, come on. Let me do that again. So Academy and all labs. I'm really sorry about this. It's all good, it happens. Okay, of course. We go to the first lab then. Let me open this one and let me just log in. And I am logged in. Oh, no, I'm not. Okay, now I'm logged in. Perfect. We made it. So, okay, they will, the website has an issue to cost configuration in that trust all origin. To solve the lab, craft some JavaScript that use cost to retrieve the administration API key and upload the code to your exploit server. The lab is solved when you successfully submit the administration API, the administrator API key. You can log in, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we have an exploit. Uh, go to the exploit server here and submit solution. Okay, let me first check what's going on here. Mm. Not this one. I'm trying to find, where is it? Okay, here it is. All right, let me send it to repeater and send request. I just want to add there just to see if that will, okay. Okay, everything everything comes back as supposed to. Uh, actually not, but I mean for the lab, everything comes back as supposed to. All right, so we need to craft some, some JavaScript. Okay, let's do that. We are starting with our, yeah, creating our scripts. Uh, we are create, we are gonna create, uh, yeah, a variable of request in there. We want to create a new, XML HTTP request. Sorry, but I don't want to interrupt. Can you just zoom in on the screen uh, on the browser a little bit? Yes, yes I can. Thank you. Right. So next, we want to if I can write. Want to create our listener? Come on. Now we want to send our request to. Let me read it again. Okay. I guess I. Account. Oh, it's, uh, 
Do, do, do. Okay. Yeah, I'm guessing is this one. In there, I need to add. Oops. Now, uh, we want also to pass credentials. And we want to try to send our request. Okay. Now we want to rub the administrations, administrator uh, key, right? So let's say site equals I think this one and then yeah we want to log Uh, I think, okay, here. We want to grab the response text, right? Uh, I'm forgetting, am I forgetting something? Definitely I am, but we'll see that in practice. Just copy and paste it. So I have it here, okay. Let's store that. Uh, XML HTTP, that's wrong. Let's store that and let's deliver exploit to the victim. And let's uh, check the logs. Ju just so you're aware, mate, your proxy is intercepting, so when it's storing it, it might not actually be storing oh. anything. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, good, good you pointed out, thanks. Okay, so we store it. Let me copy and paste it here and deliver exploit to victim. And let's access the logs and see what we have there. I don't see anything. I don't even see mine. Okay, it hits the log endpoint, but it doesn't actually log anything. So let's go back to the exploit server. We have a request, this is fine. This is, uh, I don't think that plays any role. This is also fine. Request open get. That should be one second guys uh, and here is okay and if i go to home if i go to oh my mistake I need, okay, I think I need this one, actually. Okay, we store it, deliver to the victim. And let me go to the log. Anything here? I don't see anything. I don't know much about calls, to be honest, mate. I can't really help you here. But in your JavaScript okay. code, in the in the callback, you do set a variable called site. Um, but it's not used anywhere. 
So I, I don't know if you have to log it, like console.log it or whatever you want. I, I don't know. I'm just sort of piping in just to see if I can help at all. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Yes. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, that shouldn't be used actually, because this is so security account details. And that's all right. Let me do. I don't think that that's it, but sometimes you never know. And then we have the key and response text. Uh, it looks fine. To, oh, it looks now it looks fine to me, to be honest. Let me retry it. And let's access the logs. Does it throw an error if your JavaScript's wrong? No, I yeah. don't see any error here. Do you know if you need the script tags around it or, do, or is it expecting JavaScript in that box? First, first, I'm trying to see if I have everything right, and I don't have any any uh, typos there. Should That's get also wrong I'll here. Say should get be a string there, yeah. Yes, get should be a string here. Uh, that's fine. That's also fine. The function is also fine. Let's try it once more. No, that's that's really weird. Am I using the correct view? Uh, URLs, okay. So, yep, that looks fine. Okay. Let me just do that thing again. Let me replace it here. It's the same. <coughs> That's a comma here. It's a comma here. It should work, actually, that one. So what what what's the um what's the URL you're copying from? Is it that referral URL? Is the it, it's so it's actually this endpoint. Okay. Right, which... Yes. Yeah. Do you not need to add uh, my account uh, question mark ID equals like admin or whatever the user was that you were trying to steal? No, because it's actually coming from the account details endpoint. Right. If okay. you check in yeah, the, yeah, yeah. if you see if you see it here, it comes it's the same point. What did surprise me though is
I don't think that plays any role, by the way, but you never know. Okay. Um, okay, I think that was it. So, yeah, that's, let me, let me try again. Uh, let's say site, right? And let me deliver it. And let me access the logs, but I'm going to access, okay. So we have it here. Okay. Yep, that's the last deliver to the victim. Okay, so the what happened, at least to my understanding, I don't know why. Please don't don't ask me. It expects the function, uh, the the parameter in the function to be a, to come as a location. Is that now, acting as a like a window dot location? Is is that telling yes, you to redirect? Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 So in this case, right now. If you see, that was the last delivered to victim. And here we should have the administrator key, which if we decode it, we have it here. Okay, let's see now. I'm assuming that this is the correct one. Submit solution. Yay, finally. It took a little bit more than expected, but uh, that's always the joys of doing it live as well. Like, yes, when, when, when yes. you're doing it at home with nobody watching, it's easy. Like you get it first time. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Ah, uh, yeah, I've done no, that. It was a... done that so many it times was... streaming before, even on like hack the boxes that I know I can do really easy, and uh, you can have people watching, and you just, you get flustered. You're like, oh god, why is it not working? Okay, so we do one more, or so we move to the next one. Um, let me read the, what is it here? Let me read. Okay. That's Twitchception right there. Sorry? I said that, right. that was Twitchception. Yes, yes. See, we are living in the matrix. Uh, okay, let's do one more and then we can move to the next one. Where is it? Here. Again, the same login. Okay. Uh, I think I still have the Okay, let's log in. Cool. And what we need to do right now? Uh Craft some JavaScript that we this course to retrieve administrator API key and upload the code to your exploit server. Okay, same story. Let's go to the exploit server and yeah. Let me grab my previous payload. I'm assuming it won't work, at least not out of the box. Let's try it. Okay, here is our delivered to victim. Nothing works. What else I can try is put that all this in a, in an iframe. And actually in an iframe uh, sandbox, which what actually does is the, the sandbox iframes always returning null as, as an origin. So 
So we have a lot of scripts, a lot of navigation, uh, and what else? And a lot of forms. And we have set stock. That was the other way around. Okay. Here we need to grab all that thing again as it was and here. Close the iframe. Let me copy it to start it uh, deliver to victim and access the logs. This was the second one, and that was the first one. Okay, still nothing. Oh, of course, because I'm using, first of all, the previous URLs. Grab it from here. And replace it. Okay. Let me store it. And let me check the logs. That was the second, the second time, right? Uh, let's go back again. I'm not really sure that. Okay, okay, here it is. All right, that wasn't bad at all, I think, right, guys? That's the API key. Cool. Perfect. That was the, the way to solve the, the second lab. Pretty much the same story. The only difference is the only differences was that uh, this one was inside an iframe, in a, inside an, a sandbox iframe. Okay. That was about course, right? I think uh, the next topic is about the XXE. So I'm going to stop sharing my, my screen and we are gonna continue with, uh, with the slides. Can you maybe uh, share? Sorry, mate, I, I was away from the keyboard. What's, what's, what's good on? Uh, if you can share the, oh, let me stop presenting. I thought I stopped. If you can share the slides, so yeah. we can continue with the XXE. Sure, sorry, but yeah, I was gonna say, I was just nipping to the loop. There you go. It's okay. And uh, in the meantime, guys, please, as I think I mentioned it already, I stress it quite enough. Please bear with us. It's uh, it's the first time we're trying to do something like this. We are both uh, completely remotely. And uh, yeah, we need to find the best way of collaborating and sharing uh, yeah, screens and material. Yeah, and doing it from such sort of, even over like Streamlabs, it is really difficult to, to get two people on the same slides same labs you know same microphone same everything um 
yeah so yeah do bear with us guys yeah thank you all right so next topic xxe xml and external entity injection right um so xxe it's pretty it's yeah simply is an attack against uh, misconfigured uh parsers right uh it's an attack against applications which are passing xml input right and as i said is based on the uh, is based actually the reason behind it is uh because of a misconfigured xml parser and this attack can lead to disclosure of confidential data denial of services server side request forgery uh, port scanning from yeah the perspective from the machine like a csrf right and you can also do uh, file inclusions uh, yeah and whatnot there is a uh, quite many things that you can achieve with an xxe all right here here we, we see uh, a code example actually uh, what is supposed to do is that it handles uh, authorization with uh, the use of an XML file, right? So you are creating, we're creating an XML document. Uh, we are calling our uh, XML loader and yeah, we are passing it and then we are giving it the, the user and the password as uh, in, in the creds, in the credentials, right? And then what you should see as an output is, hey, you have logged in as uh, user X or whatever is going to be your uh, username. Right. Can we move to the next, the next slide, please? Right. Now, what can happen if instead of giving the uh, correct XML, we provide um, wrong XML, like this piece of code, right? In this case, uh, what we do is that we include an uh, external entity, right? Which is the, the system. And we are name it as an XXE. And then later on, we are calling it in the uh, users. Yeah, in, in the user input, right? So in this case, your output will be something like this, right? Uh, you will see logged in as a user, and instead of the user, you will see the content of uh, ETC password file, which is the one we are requesting in when we are actually injecting the external entity, right? We, you see that we are injecting the, uh, yeah, we are passing the system uh, external entity, and we are requesting the file of uh, ETC password in this case. Yeah, move to the next. Okay, but system is not the only one uh, external entity you can use, right? Public is, is one more. You see pretty much the same example here using the, the public uh, uh, entity. And the output is going to be pretty much the same as before. And I think that's about when it comes to injections i think the next one should be how to mitigate and how to fix it right now first of all uh vulnerabilities like xxe is something that you always need to consider the language you use and the parser you are using it's uh, many vulnerabilities they have pretty much uh, uh, same way of mitigating the issues, but uh, XXE is, is more specific on the parsers you are using, right? So first of all, if your parser is unsafe, check if, if there is any available parser, better one, right? Uh, disable all the external entities on your parser. And yeah, if you need more clarity on how to use the, yeah, the parser, please RTFM, right? Read the fucking manual. So one thing to keep in mind is that strict schemas are not really a mitigation, right? Uh, if you're still allowing external entities 
and you are just enforcing the schema, it doesn't really mean anything. Uh, someone can easily inject an external entity and ask for whatever they want. Right? <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, also if you, are, if you are allowing external document type definition, really these schemas to be uh, used as well, right? So to summarize uh, regarding XXE, uh, execution of commands, yeah, what can happen is execution of commands during external entity resolution or doc types on XML parsers, uh, vulnerable actually exploitations that can lead, a uh, way of exploitation that can lead from an XXE could be, uh, yeah, uh, remote command execution, SSRF, uh, even denial of service. Disable the external entity resolution and disable external doc type resolution and inline declaration on XML. That's the way to go when it comes to mitigating XXEs. Right? And I think after that, it should be the lab. Yep, good job. So let me share again my screen and let me go to the XXE. Oh, he's still here. All right, let's find XXE. Here we are. I can't see the screen, by the way. I don't know if you shared it. I've shared it. Let me try once more again. Ah, oh, no, actually, I didn't. I've left it on. Awesome. Yeah, I can see it now. Perfect. All right. So moving to the lab. Let's open the lab. And what is asking us is uh, this lab has a, a check stock future that passes XML input and returns any unexpected values in the response. To solve the lab, inject an XML external entity to retrieve the content of EPC password file. Okay, that shouldn't be hard. Oh, there is no login here. Okay, cool. Um, okay, let me go to my proxy settings and let me Let me intercept here and let check the stock. All right, I will send that directly to repeater. Okay, here we see that, yeah, it's sending an XML in, in this case with the product ID and uh, the store ID. What I could simply, uh, try to do will be uh, something come on something like adding a doc type declaration and then in here we are going to add uh, the entity We are asking for the file etc password, right? And we are closing this, and I think I'm still forgetting something. You need the final is... chevron at the far yes. end, yeah. Yes, yeah, right, that one. And here, add something like. Let's hope that will work. Let's send it. Okay. That that worked immediately. That was nice. It didn't stress us out and, and get us embarrassed and in a lot in the front of uh, the two people. The, the joy of the uh, <laughs> of, of the demo gods. Yes. <laughs> but you know at, at least they will have something to laugh about. Uh, so 
okay that was quite simple and pretty easy right we just inject uh, the talk type we are adding the uh, system external entity and from there we are requesting the file of etc password cool i'm gonna do one more that was fast uh, to perform a necessary f attack okay that sounds interesting to be honest this lab has a tech stock okay the same lab uh, the lab server is running a simulated ec2 instance metadata ec2 metadata endpoint at the default url which is blah 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 this one this endpoint can be used to retrieve data about the instance some of which might be sensitive to solve the lab exploit the excessive vulnerability to perform a necessary attack that obtains the server I am secret access key from the EC2 metadata endpoint. Okay. The description sounds interesting. So I guess the same story here. All right. Let me send that to repeater as well. And oh, do I have the previous one? Yes, I do. Let me just copy this thing. Put it here, but now uh, this time, instead of this, we want to call this thing. Okay. And yeah, let's see nothing happened ah of course nothing happened okay invalid product id and latest anything i think let me try that because okay i was assuming that it's going to be uh, the metadata endpoint directly reachable from here but that's not the case. Okay, see, those are actually directories. Uh, I am security credentials. And add, okay. Perfect. Okay, we have uh, his AWS token, we have his access key and his uh, secret access key, right? Perfect. You can... I'm actually quite uh, curious to see if those are valid credentials. Anyways, that was also the, the, the second lab. Again, quite easy, I would say. If, yeah, of course, if you want... If you if you know what you're looking for. But uh, that was the XXE lab as well, plus the, the presentation, right? Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you very much. And I'm going to pass the mic again to Richard. Thank you very much, mate. Let me move back over to here. Right. So again, um, th 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 these sort of slides are quite difficult to, to write um, without having a technical sort of thing to show you it, it can be quite difficult to explain what i want to explain sort of thing um but anyway we're, we're looking at vulnerable and outdated components uh, which was previously known in the in the 2017 version of owasp uh, as using components with known vulnerabilities uh, this can be client-side software so it could be things like jquery or any sort of javascript library um, or it could be server-side software uh, so it could be telerik it could be um, even outdated operating systems, things like that, um, IIS, Apache, etc. You know, just any sort of outdated software that you know of. Um, and again, similarly to the logic, uh, logic issues, it could be rated from a, a low risk issue all the way up to a critical issue, uh, depending on usually the, the vulnerabilities that sort of are known within that software. Uh, for example, an, an outdated jQuery library might be a lower or medium at best. But a, an outdated IIS or something might be a critical. So, yeah, just 
sort of outdated software, uh, jQuery, web servers, SSH, FTP, etc. All, all of these are usually low impact bugs. Um, in saying that, if if they're running something really old, like Pro FTP 1.3 or something, then that's obviously probably a, a high risk issue. Um, but these are sort of the, the 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 software you'll find externally. Um, so, like on an external infrastructure test or a web app test or something like that, you might find these these uh, these systems. And again, they're usually low impact bugs. But when we do internal outdated software, uh, sorry, internal uh, infrastructure assessments and things, I, I'm not even joking. Literally everything is old. I find it so difficult to understand how these giant corporations and things, when you go into their network and you find things that are running like Windows XP, or I went into, I'll, I'll, yeah, so I'll tell you the story. Um, I went into a, a big shop in, in England, um, doing a pen test for, for their sort of branch and their entire network was flat so i plugged into one switch i could see the entire uk network crazy um that's not the point of the story point of the story was there was a server running there from 1996 this was like three years ago it was crazy anyway absolutely off topic but it was crazy um frameworks you see loads of frameworks out of date php uh, you know things like Co uh, cake PHP and, and things like that. Um, you see operating systems out of date, as I was just saying. SMB is a big one, um, usually because they're they're running like old protocols and things like that, um, old versions of the protocols. And yeah, these are, these are usually high or critical risk issues. Not always, but usually. So internal outdated software, um, Eternal Blue, as an example. Here is an Nmap example, sort of just showing you that it's vulnerable. But um, this is a critical, because it will result in you having a shell most of the time. So how would you find outdated software? Um, externally, you can use things like Nmap and Nessus and even Wappalyzer. Um, if you want to do it on a grand scale, you can use things like Shodan. Um, there, there's other ones, I think, now don't quote me on this, but I think census.io also does outdated software, but I could be wrong on that as a, don't quote me on that. But like you see here, um, this is running PHP 5.6, 5, PHP 5 has been deprecated or, you know, end of life for, I mean, I, I started PHP back 10 years ago and I'm pretty sure it's going to the end of its life then. Um, so yeah, just to sort of give give you an idea of how old that is. Um, Apache 2.4.23 isn't actually that old, but it's still outdated. Um, so if there's no patch available, what you can do is, is you can add a frontline defense sort of thing. So although it's not a great solution, it's better than nothing. So if you have a vulnerable server and you can't patch it for reasons X, Y, and Z, you could add like a load balancer in front of it that would stop a certain amount of sort of attack surface. Um, again, it's not a great solution, but it is something you can do. Um, the ways of sort of fixing it is is having a patch cycle. The number of companies I go to and I, I, I they don't have a patch cycle or, or they've patched something, but they haven't done the appropriate patch. For example, with a lot of Microsoft updates, you, you update something um, and you either have to reboot the PC or update a registry key or, or a mixture of both. And you just, they don't do that. They, it's, it's frustrating. Um, but anyway, remove unused dependencies. So again, if, if you have something that depends on something, that's fine. But don't have unnecessary dependencies. They're just adding to the attack surface. You, you, you're just going to get stung by it in the end. Um, asset management is a big one know what sort of stuff you have in your business. So if you're running 20 Windows XP boxes, you should know exactly where they are, where they're located on the network, why they exist. Yeah, you know, it, it's not rocket science. Have have a list of, of things, um, like a, a managed list, not just, you know, a piece of paper. Have an actual list of things that are good, uh, that are, a good list of, of things that sort of are outdated or not even just outdated, but everything. 
everything and, and take notes of what they are. Um, if you've got a Ubuntu box, have a note on what the sort of last update was. Yeah, same with the software. Um, when, when you go to companies and things, you, you see them uh, sort of install software with from a centralized location, GPO updates and things like that. But again, have an have a have a asset management list of what what you have, what what's installed, what's outdated, why it's outdated. Um, only use official sources. I know this should go without saying, but only use official sources. Anybody can tamper with things or, or upload their own version uh, of sort of software on their own server. You know, it's not it's not again, it's not rocket science. It's just use official sources. Um, and software, de software development life cycles, this is a big sort of thing nowadays. Um, yeah, again, it, it stops outdated software or helps stop outdated software. Uh, and lab time, although I know that I've looked at labs and there is no labs for this, so I'm going to go and do another one. I'm going to go do another business logic issue. Um, I don't know what you all think of that. Uh, what... Should we have a look at one of these? This is do, 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 as examples. Yeah, unfortunately, that was a quick s section of the slide. Uh, sorry, a quick section of the of the um, of the stream. I guess the presentation that was the word I was thinking of. However, there's only so much you can talk about outdated software. Um, and yeah, there, there's I, I'm almost certain there's no labs in here for outdated software. I'll have a quick look. Outdated, out of date. No. Let's go to business logic then. And let's watch me embarrass myself on this. Inconsistent. Let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got low level logic, inconsistent. In fact, who have we got in the chat? <laughs> Sorry, two seconds, guys. Would any of you actually want to see another? business logic issue or shall I go for something completely different I mean I could do another XXE one or because our approaches might be different might mine and Spiros's let's see if we've got any XXE I mean I've solved all of them apparently uh, let's do an out of band interaction one to prevent academy to prevent the academy platform being used in this attack to by third party our firewall blocks so it's been sold alive you must use yeah that's fine that is fine because we have burp and we have collaborator but we don't have collaborator they give you a collaborator uh they don't give you a collaborator Uh, do they not? That'd be really. You can detect. What a pain. Um, okay, well I guess I can't do that because I don't have. And Spiros, do you have a do you do you have a pro version of Burp installed? If not, I will move on to a different one. So it'd be, it might be it might it might have been a fun sort of one to do. Um, let's go. So we can't use out of bound because I don't have that. Uh, exploiting blind blind XXE data using malicious external DTD. That was fine, but I don't have anywhere to host a malicious external DTD. Collaborate must be yeah. What a pain. Um, I say I don't actually have a. Oh wait, there's an exploit server. Did I miss that in the last one as well? Let's go back. A uh, job. We'll just we'll just do this one. We're here now. We'll do this one. Right. So where's my burp gone? In fact, you can't even see my full screen, can you? So let's hide that. Now you should be able to see my full screen. Let's find my burp. F11. Just pin that tab. Okay, let's have a look. Can you see everything? Anybody give me a thumbs up if you can see everything. Exploit server. Uh, da, 
do, do. Oh, this isn't even what I wanted, I don't think. Anyway, let's, let, let's just see what we can do. Let's see if I can actually do any of this first. Check stock. Oh, let's do this now. Add it to the scope. I was just thinking then, why, why is this not working? This should be working. But no, of course not. There you go, now it should be working. Right, yeah. So let's just intercept, check stock. Right, awesome. So what we can do is add this to, send this to repeater. Because we don't want to be doing this every time. Not if we can help it. What do we get back from this? 91, awesome. That's exactly what we want to see. We want to see it working. So I'm just pulling up my chat as well. Right, okay, cool. Hey, thanks for the follow. Um, so let's have a look at what we can do. Uh, so we got duct type, blah. We got entity, foo, system, uh, file, Etsy password, just to see what happens. Foo. Entities are not allowed for, for, for security reasons. Okay. It says, why is this? Go to raw. Raw is so much more useful sometimes. Uh, that's fine. So what happens if we do, we have an exploit server, so we're going to want to post things to this exploit server. I imagine. Uh, so we can do foo system something like that. And then just foo. Entity is not allowed for, for, for security reasons. Um, that's annoying. I'm pretty sure. So, active directory te te techniques. Uh, you could exploit Active Directory with this if you could get an NTLM hash, um, but I don't think that's what it wants us to do. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's for, for the next stream, I see. I thought you were giving me hints on this. Um, anyway, so if we have a doc type, but you want to... Uh, you, so you can, you can do out-of-band stuff with your own hosted... Thing, but if it's blocking, if it's the element, uh, element product ID any ID entity you know what? what we can do, we could just go to Google. And we could do include uh, call external. Oh, I would help if I could type external doc type. So not, not doc type. That's not what I meant. So we go into here. No. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I did. I didn't do that. No, I didn't. I did something else. So let's just use this system and then we call that one, right? Entities, I don't have an entity. Mm. Anybody, anybody got any ideas? I'm thinking with uh, this server. So we, we wanna call, we wanna include the external doc type to ha then have the entities within that, and then we call the entities. Oh, wait. Wait. Now the UI. I'll put ID 1. So, what happens in here if we do the lex? Of course, I can't tab in there. Entity is foo. That's still not going to work though, is it? Uh, foo 
let's just try this system test. Test. So then we can do foo, but that's not going to help at all. So obviously we can't. Up. I am stuck with this, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I already completed this one as well. Apparently not solved. Let's just double check what the, the description says. Uh, to, this lab has a check stop feature that passes XML input but does not display the result. Right. So to solve the lab, exfiltrate the content of Etsy hostname. Product DD. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, sorry. I was... Uh, a bit dim so that's an internal we want an external dtd so that's fine so if he, if the dtd declared is not in an external file the doc type definition must contain the reference to the dtd file right so so it's, let's say slash exploit was where am i I've lost it. So slash exploit is our DTD, which is fine. I mean, I can call it .dtd if we need to. Unless I'm doing this in a completely wrong way, which is very possible. Yeah, let's call it DTD. Whatever. And then we store. Um, and then we... Oh, okay. Right, I see. So we can actually... Let's... Take one of these, copy and paste it into there. Uh, elements, uh, what am I looking for? So our element is product ID, right? So we store that. Uh, da, da, da. This is this, I'm just sort of copy and pasting now. I don't know really. So I'm going to assume the element is stock check, and that has oh, what have we got? We got product ID and store ID. Everyone agree with that? So we save that. We copy that. So element. Uh, do, 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 do. And then how do we? Which contains DTD? Defining a DTD. I want to make sure that sort of I'm writing what I'm thinking here. So note system note.tdd. Yeah, no, that's what we've just looked at, isn't it? So it has to be external. But if I can't use note, oh, wait, hold up. Hold up. Am I being really dumb now? Was it because I still had those things in it? Uh, entity boo it's system it's uh, do, 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 do. grab that access log right and then we do boo. Do I have to refresh this? Right. I was being dim. I was being really, really dim. Okay. So let's go back to Xbox server. All right. Uh, so now we can fetch that. We want to define in here uh, xx x, whatever. Oh crap! Oh no! I don't know what just happened. Then we want to do an entity of uh, yeah, I think that's right. So if we want to do an entity of test. 
system file Etsy password. No. Entity of X, 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 Y, X, anything. Test two. There you go. That's easy. Uh, HTTPS. I'm just going to copy that. I don't even know if I can do this because I want to do that. I want to do test, but I'm pretty sure that's a that's a invalid. I'm pretty sure that's an invalid XML thingy. But if I fetch this, uh, parsing error, of course, is. Is it a parsing error with this though? Store send. Parsing error. Why is it a parsing error? Um, is it even is it even hitting my server? Let's just click that. Can I can I clear this log? That'd be very helpful. So one minute, that one. Okay, so it does fetch that. Um, let's look at. I'm just going to cheat now because it's getting late and I want to go get go get a cup of tea. Um, Blind XXE uh, da, 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 external DTD. No, that's a DYD. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm pretty sure Zephyrfish is. I remember working on this with. Maybe, maybe it wasn't this one with him. So, port scanning. Uh, let's have a look. So we can set data as a data system as that one. Yeah, so I was on the right track to begin with, I think. Um, let's have a look. Go. Why do I keep losing the page? So we want to. I just want to. I'm just going to copy this. Thanks. Cheers, Andy. For this, we wanted to be file Etsy hostname, I take it. And then it's not data we want anyway, is it? Element should be product ID. Passing error, that's fine. Have I done something wrong here just to check for this? So no. So then, if I include foo, I get a passing error. So is that something within here then? Must be right. It's got to be something within here. Passing error. Um, nothing. How about that? So I have no idea. Um, it's got to be this foo then, isn't it? But then it's still within the doc type. Uh, foo system. So it's fetching. In fact, I know it's fetching now because it's in the logs. Access logs. Access. Access log. Why did I need to fill that out? So yeah, it is. I know, I know how to do this. Is that right? Payloads all the things. Because let's be honest, as a pen test, I'm just going to copy these anyway. No, I want, there's one that I want. So, yeah, why would that not be working then? So we've got an external, external D. What do I do? Do is foo. No, because if I do that, if I do it as this, right? So I've got a standard. Oh, let's remove that. I've got a standard XML entity, 
um, and we go into here, it just breaks. It says the entities aren't allowed. So it has to be an external. It has to be an external um, DTD. It has to be an external doc type declaration, and it has to be out of bound. So it needs to be. Res it needs the, the. Where is it? Where it is the sort of payload thing needs to be on the exploit server. So we need to fetch it, and then that will contain a a reference to the to the file that we need to extract, and then it needs to be logged into. The lot it needs to be sort of appended to a URL that we control, which is this one here. Um, and then the payload will be within a parameter that will then be sort of posted or getted to this log file. I know I know what I want to do. I just need to know the syntax to do it. And I'm almost certain that I'm not. God, I keep getting these notifications. Um, right, my wife actually wants to go to bed in a second, so I will have to jump off regardless whether I finish this or not. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to finish it. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to end the stream, but I'm not going to complete this thing. So you guys can hold me true to that. So lab is not solved. I'm not going to look at it. And then next time I come back on, we'll do it again because it would be good to finish this. Um, right, so... Spiros, anything you want to say before we go, mate? No, man. I was also, yeah, ready to say that uh, maybe it's a good idea to keep it for the next stream. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, Instead of uh, bashing our heads exactly. in the middle of the night. And it's 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 what it's one of those things again. Doing it live is so much more difficult. Um, nothing seems to go right, and, and as soon as you sort of. As soon as you get indeed, stuck, indeed. You, you just, yeah, like you say, you're bagging your head against the wall. Um, Awesome. So, if anybody, ha I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the stream running for a minute. I'm just going to put it on to um, ending. But if anybody has any recommendations or any ideas for the next few streams, let us know. And if you're watching this on YouTube, then let us know in the comments. Because obviously, the more people that tell us what they want to see, the more we can sort of tailor to that. But yeah, thank you for yeah, everyone for joining. Awesome. Thanks for all the support. I mean, we've got loads of new followers here, and I appreciate all of you that's just followed. Some people asked for uh, Active Directory uh, techniques, so maybe after finishing the whole OASP thingy, we can uh, focus in a little bit more on on that aspect. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Um, I'm not I'm not amazing yeah. Active Directory stuff, but w what I do know is a lot of it is good fun. Nobody is perfect in life, which I <laughs> I try to be there. <laughs> No, no. Then that, then that you you will become a boring person, man. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, I appreciate you all for joining, and thank you, and have a good evening. Take it easy, everyone. Uh, see ya, everyone. Thank you for coming, and uh, see you on the next stream. <laughs>